And this is not how I plan on starting today. Ranger and I were headed to town to go pick up some parts and we just lost brakes on the truck. So we're gonna pull this thing down into the shop, see what the problem is. My guess is a brake line, but just a change of pace for today. Got the truck pulled in the shop here. I think I found the problem. So there's a little puddle right there, a brake fluid. Looks like it's coming off that brake line off the T on the rear axle. So we'll have to get some parts ordered. I really don't feel like hand bending brake lines. So we'll see if we can get a kit. It's been three days since I filmed the first clip where the brake line went out on my truck and I got to replace things were still giving me problems though and I had a leak at my brake master cylinder. So I got that replaced. Everything checks out now. I got the truck back which is great because I need this to get parts and supplies. Oh hi kitty. For some of these other projects. So now that that's done, I'm gonna go and start working on a Polaris four-wheeler like I wanted to three days ago, but hey, that's just how it rolls. So we'll go over there and kind of go over things. So the four-wheeler behind me is a Polaris 330 Trail Boss. Uh, those of you that saw my first couple of videos where we were working on a Trail Blazer, we actually robbed some parts off of this. I wanna get this thing put back together. As you can see, the tie rods are still off of it. Seats off, some of the side plastics off. I just want to get this thing put back together and out of here before we start robbing more parts and it just becomes uh, something that we scavenge off of. So, so I'm going to get the tie rods put on. The fuel pump was bad. I have a new fuel pump there. I'm sure the battery is dead. Uh, as you can see, you know, tires all need aired up. So we're going to get to it on this and we'll check back in once we've got some stuff knocked out. So this is going to be a pretty straightforward swap. I'll screw the ends of these off and screw the new ones on. The only issue I'm having is this long bolt here is stuck. So you can see this one here slides in and out really easy. We're gonna have to reuse those because I don't have a longer bolt. So I'm gonna try and heat that up with the torch and see if I can get it off. Before I get the torch and try and get this bolt out of here, I just wanted to show why I replaced these. You can see just how much play is in there that's unreal no wonder that steering was sloppy so so i got the tire rods back on but i want to show an example on why you don't have 10 different projects going at once i couldn't find the lug nuts for this four-wheeler and i've been looking for them for probably 20 minutes and then i just happened to look over here to where the cub's taken apart and i see the lug nuts sitting on this cart <laughs> So if you start tearing something apart and you get something else and you start tearing that apart, pretty soon you're gonna have the same problems I have. So I'm hoping if nothing else by making these videos, it kind of helps keep me accountable to try and get some of this junk put back together. So the plan now is I'm gonna take the front plastics and rack and everything off of this. Um, it had an issue like it was running out of fuel. I put a new carburetor on it. I still have the old carburetor and I got a new fuel pump, but that's probably been eight months ago. So we're gonna take all that stuff off and just kind of go through everything, check the valves, new spark plug, new fuel pump, just kind of throw it all at it and see if it'll start running better. So we got the front end completely taken apart on this. The fuel pump's pretty easy to get to. Like I said, it's right there. But this thing is filthy, and I'm not sure if you can see it or not. You can see my breath, so it's pretty cold here. Um, I don't really want to take it outside and power wash it here, so I think I'm going to load it up, run it up to the car wash, spend five bucks, get this thing power washed off. That way, whenever I go to maintenance it and check everything over, I'm not knocking dirt into the engine or into the carburetor or anything like that. So we're going to load this up, run it up there, and hopefully get it washed tonight. If you're wondering how I'm going to load this by myself, here you go. Alright, 
got it all washed off back here in the shop at home. It's cold. I'm going to go inside. I'll be back out here tomorrow when hopefully it's a little warmer. Back at it again tonight. Going to try and get some stuff done before I get too cold to go inside. Uh, as you can see, the shed's not insulated. Um, this is real life, guys. I, I don't have a super fancy shop. I've got what I have. I'm working on it as I go. But uh, you can see, got a makeshift work table. But anyway, like I said, we're having issues with this thing running out of fuel. So I'm going to go through. There's a lot happening down here with fuel lines coming off the petcock to the fuel pump so on so forth check the valves make sure everything on the carburetor is right hopefully find a smoking gun so i'm gonna get to it all right checking back in i got most of the stuff taken apart that i want to on this four-wheeler so i just wanted to go over where we're at so i got the carburetor off it's all taken apart no real issues there a little bit of gunk this is the fuel pickup tube out of the tank there's some crust on that that probably a problem all the old fuel lines are off and i'm replacing with new i also have the new fuel pump installed with the new lines on there so i'm going to pull this cap off check valve lash throw the new carburetor or th throw the carburetor back on connect everything up and hopefully this will be running it appears we've had a mouse living rent free in this breather <laughs> I'll have to get that all blown out of there. Hey, where were you when the mouse was in the breather, huh? You can see that's all full of crap. Okay, this is all back together. Well, as far as it needs to be to run. I don't have the plastics or anything on. I put some gas in it. I'm going to hook the battery charger up and hit the start on this thing and see what happens. Since we had the fuel pump off, I might have to spray some starting fluid in the intake. So I have the air filter off to help with that. Well, that was that was exciting <laughs> oh we got some work to do all right back out here today uh called it quits a little bit early yesterday after the fire obviously <laughs> a little bit frustrated but hey it's a new day so uh, i spent some time thinking about what could be causing these problems we have fuel to the engine we have spark and i just pulled a compression test and we have good compression so the only two things that come to mind are ignition timing and valve timing so i'm going to pull the valve cover off and look at the camshaft and double check valve timing and then also pull the flywheel cover off and pull the flywheel and see if there's any way there's a broken wire or something's causing the timing to jump around and not fire at the right time so got a lot of work to do today we're going to get after it we'll check back in All right, so I have everything taken apart that I want to take apart, and I think that I finally found the source of the issue. So I'll explain to you guys real quick. So I have the flywheel off. The flywheel's right here, and there's a shiny spot that's raised on there. So this sits on the crankshaft like that, and there's a pickup down there. So as the raised spot passes over that, it tells the engine to fire. Well, as I pulled this cover off, I pulled all these pieces of, I don't know what it was. I thought it was a mouse nest, but there's no way a mouse could get in there. So then it made sense that the pull rope is gone. So what I'm putting together in my head happened is the pull rope broke off. It got wrapped around in here and spun around and it knocked this bracket down. So the gap on that is supposed to be... 15 to 30 thousandths and if you look you can see the gap is definitely not 
where it needs to be. It's more like a quarter of an inch. So pretty promising. I'm going to get this buttoned up. I'm going to bend that bracket up and set the proper clearance on that. Hopefully get everything done tonight where I can start this up and see if it runs. Okay, so I got this all put back together. I'm going to try and start it again. I'm better prepared this time just in case, but I think we got the problem solved, but this should tell us. So it sounds like it's running pretty good. I'm gonna dial in the carburetor just a little bit, throw the plastics on, and then take it out for a test drive. And this one should be ready to go. Now that I've proven this thing is gonna run and behave like it should, I went ahead and put the plastics and racks and everything on it. It's pretty well ready to go. I'm gonna get a set of rear tires for it and a battery. Then I'll be ready to sell it here come springtime. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the type of content I'm putting out. If you do, hit subscribe. As you can see here in the shed, we've got all kinds of projects. I'm going to try and do a video of this similar type probably every two weeks. So thanks again for watching.